That's right. That's always a concern um, I had. The last mile to the inflation target was going to be more challenging. Of course, we got a lot of progress from the peak, but getting from 3% or so to exactly 2%, is going to be more difficult. There's all, all sorts of reasons, really. One is the resilience of the U.S. economy. After all, growth is still strong. Then we got some supply chain issues. Think about the Red Sea, but also others. And commodity prices, oil, for example, they're doing a little better, too. Markets have priced out. That's the consequence, really, the market implication. They priced out a few rate cuts. Now it seems more reasonable. It's also closer to the Fed, right? Three cuts versus uh, four cuts. And I think the, the implication there is that expectations of sweeping deep rate cuts were misplaced. The Fed will wait until the middle of the year and go slowly. There was some evidence that the economy took a breather in January as we closed out the Friday trade. We had numbers on the retail sales and also uh, some of the industrial figures suggesting some softness had crept in. So if we look at what the consumer is doing versus the strength in the economy, is there an argument that fiscal policy is undermining this ability to get back to inflation targets. You've still got you know, this green transition or inflation reduction act, as it's called in the United States. You've got spending on defence, which also goes back into uh, some of the industrial orders. Is all the largesse from government impacting the inflation attempt to get back to the last mile or conquer the last mile? It could be. You know what? This is a very valid observation. Of course, there's a reason for that. Uh, clearly, during the pandemic, there was the need to, to support fiscally the economy from a monetary point of view. But obviously, there's effects and side effects at the same time. One of the reasons for the resilience, especially in the U.S., where we had more of a fiscal impulse, uh, is, probably, is probably precisely that, the fiscal support that now has made the economy uh, quite resilient versus um, expectations. Daniele, if you look at the Dow, and I know the Dow isn't the best measure of broader America, it was unchanged on the week. Um, the Dow transports were down quite aggressively. But, but by and large, there hasn't been an enormous hiccup in the markets, despite, as you say, the market moving closer to the Fed in terms of its expectation for interest rate cuts in 2024. They were in the market around about 140, 150 basis points. They're getting closer to the 75 that the Fed's been talking about in its dot plot. Why wasn't there a market event on the back of that? There was one day where there was a little bit of a strop over CPI, but apart from that, it's been a really solid transition in psychology from the market. Why was there not a bigger hiccup? That's right. I think the key question is which market. So we got quite a bit of a sell-off in US Treasuries, for example, or in fixed income markets more generally. Yes, but we're only at 4.28% when we were north of 5% at their peak on the yields as well. That's so right. We were as low as three and three quarters at some point, so there was quite a repricing. But if you look at equity markets, and we've been adding to certain equity markets more recently, the one thing that has changed is, yes, the Fed or Fed expectations, but also expectations on economic growth. For example, when you think about markets, equity markets that are attractively valued, they could do well in a situation where the U.S. economy does better than expected. Small caps, for example, global small caps, they are, two, they are uh, 15 years low. Yeah. So that's the market where we've been adding.